The information presented is for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed are not necessarily the opinions of any Daikin company. This information should not be confused for accounting, legal, medical, or other professional advice. Please seek advice from a qualified professional for any specific questions. Welcome to the Accelerated HVAC Success Program. My name is Ben Middleton. I'm the National Sales Training Manager for the Goodman, Amana, and Daikin Brands. Today, we're joined here with Tim Meyer. Tim is with Temperature Pro in San Antonio, Texas. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks. Happy to be here. So the first question I love to ask everyone is, how did you and uh, Courtney get into this industry? Um. <clears throat> For those of y'all who don't know, Courtney's my significant other, my partner in this business and a partner in life. Um, so it was an interesting journey for us. Um, we were looking for an opportunity to utilize our skill sets in another industry. Um, I came from the telecommunications industry, um, really doing a number of startups um, and benefited over the years of the deregulation of that industry. Um, and so my journey to HVAC is a little different. Um, my background is software um, and telecommunications. And so when I was looking for something, um, this opportunity presented itself in a franchise model. And so uh, we really quickly realized after understanding the HVAC side of the world that it's very similar to the telecommunications world. Hmm. Um, the big difference is we go to the homes and we go to the businesses. We make in the telecommunications industry, we make our money on a subscription service. We have to continue to acquire the customer, maintain the customer over the lifespan of that service. Otherwise, the capital you invest up front will be to a loss. Hmm. And so home services, Plumbing, electrical, HVAC, telecommunications, it's all the same thing. We just made our money differently from the house than an HVAC contractor would. And so from our perspective, it was an interesting opportunity to utilize our skill sets that we had um, to move forward in a, a local industry, um, one that we could call our own. You know, there's not many opportunities to develop your own AT&T or Comcast uh, here. And uh, most people's uh, capital budgets don't allow them to do something like that. So tell me a little bit about the business today. Uh, so when, well, first of all, when did you guys start? When did you guys first open the doors? We've been open almost seven years. Okay. Um, and so we opened prior to COVID, um, saw the COVID um, damage and opportunities that it mm -hmm. presented. Um, and we've lived through SEER 2 and now the retirement of 410A. Um, and so it's been an interesting, um, but foresaw uh, experience in the HVAC industry. The consistencies of the HVAC industry and the telecommunications industry are very, um, very much prevalent. We had heavy government regulation within the telecommunications industry, and that is very prevalent in our industry today. Um, and a lot of other similarities that I've seen over that time period being in the HVAC industry. Um, we've seen the technology skill sets needed for the technicians in the field have significantly changed. Um, I would equate this industry in the HVAC world going through a transitional change like we did in the telecommunications industry, where the skill sets the workers depended upon for decades in the field were no longer relevant, and the technicians needed to adopt new technologies, mm -hmm. uh, continue to grow their skill sets. Um, not be afraid of apps and computers and so forth in the world of HVAC. Um, and so it's been a big transition from 
the worker side and the skill sets needed in this field. And so I've certainly seen that in the last seven years. Um, and you and I can talk a long time about this concept, uh -huh. but I equate the significance of the inverter in HVAC as the same impacting significance in the telecommunications industry that we had between copper and fiber. Hmm. When we rolled out fiber, it was a game changer. Skill sets changed, what you could do changed. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that we have that same gating technology factor happening. And I'm excited that Daikin's driving that. And that's the alignment that we had with Daikin from the standpoint of the technology for the being innovators in the technology and, it, and recognizing that the inverter was going to change the way that consumers bought air conditioning, the way that consumers looked at air conditioning from a standpoint of the return on investment, the ROI, the energy efficiency. And so I'm tickled to be here. I mean, <laughs> I think it shows. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, just super exciting. So in your business today, uh, with the technicians that you have and the uh, those that are going out and interacting with consumers, what would you say your mix is, inverter to non-inverter equipment? Uh, well, we definitely are over 50% of our equipment sales are going to be a Daikin fit. Hmm. They will be an inverter. Um, and so that's part of our DNA. Um, and so if you're going to buy from us, we're going to have that conversation about ROI, energy efficiency, um, and, you know, the benefits, obviously, uh, that what it does besides the energy efficiency side of it. So we're very uh, much around communicating to our customers the benefits of energy efficiency for them and their wallet and the benefits for energy efficiency to their community, to their power company, um, and to the global uh, warming uh, aspect as well. Hmm. So when you look at business today, I mean, business has obviously been evolving over many years, but it seems like it, that, that evolution is accelerating. One of the big things I hear a lot of people talk about is their technology stack that they have. Uh, what does your technology stack look like um, and, and how is that evolving? Well, <clears throat> with my background coming from startup community in the software world um it, it's always been part of my dna to look at solutions out there that will help the business um and so i run our shop with two guideposts hmm. and and i think it's important to have these guideposts established out there and understand why they're there because uh, when you're out there, you're going to trade shows, you're going to a uh, vendor networking opportunity, uh, you're going to visit with one of your clients, um, you're going to get an opportunity to be exposed to innovation and thought leaders. Um, and so you can chase a lot of different things out there, but having guideposts on technology that you're going to adopt and evolve in your shop, I think is important because we all get so confused over, you know, is this going to help me move the needle or is it not going to help me move mm. the needle? Is this just repackaged way of doing things previously? Um, so our guideposts are pretty clear. One, it has to provide a superior customer experience. If it can move the needle for me to have a better customer experience, we will pay attention and we will pursue. Um, the second guidepost on that is operational efficiency. And so obviously operational efficiency is what we all like to talk about driving profits in our mm -hmm. organization. Um, but don't dismiss operational efficiency helping you grow revenue because customers appreciate you being more efficient and thorough and they'll refer you. Mm. Um, and the other thing about operational efficiency that I think a lot of people discount is 
that it also, by having efficiency in your organization, lends itself to believe that you have a process. And so as we struggle to recruit individuals into this industry, um, having them come into a shop that has operational efficiency and business process as part of their DNA allows them to fall into a comfort zone quicker so they know they're doing the right thing and they understood what's expected of them in that process. But operational efficiency is always going to be a guidepost. That's pretty mm. standard. But customer experience, I mean, ultimately, I love our relationship with Daikin. I love to be able to fly those colors and to talk about what Daikin's doing in the marketplace. But selfishly, somebody else is down the street doing the same thing. And um, Daikin can't be just your differentiator. So differentiating yourself from a standpoint of customer experience mm -hmm. is really the important thing. You can layer on your customer experience being different and with Daikin being your underlining brand. And to me, that's a strategy of success. Um, and customer experience, you know, the way I look at that is um, we all want to be paid what we believe that we should be paid in this industry. And we all struggle to communicate that in the heat of the moment when the customer says, why is this contactor so expensive? Why is this system so expensive? Mm -hmm. And so if you've done a good job of providing a superior customer experience through that process, the value will be appreciated and the customers are willing to pay for timely repairs repairs that are done throughout the process of communicating when my part's going to be available, when we're going to come out. Um, and so moving forward with any type of technology that you're going to adopt or process or anything like that, um, it has to be valid to your organization. And, you know, you can spend a lot of time chasing things that you think will do well for your organization, but if it didn't allow you to do things quicker, faster, better, and provide that outcome to your customers that your customer can see, I'm not sure I would do it. And so we are at our shop, we are a glutton for new technology. <laughs> and I would say that comes from my DNA. Um, and it comes from the staff that I've recruited that also shares that DNA. Um, we all believe that we can learn more by asking questions mm -hmm. and opening ourselves up for opportunities to learn and putting ourselves in situations where we get that opportunity. Um, so, you know, there's, <clears throat> there's a stack. Yes, I've got one. I think one that really uh, caused the genesis of this conversation was XOI. Yeah. Um, when my TSM called me and said, hey, we got this deal with XOI we just cut, I didn't ask questions. I said, how much is it? And when can I get going? Um, and that largely had to do with me having some familiarity with XOI in the past. Um, and the struggles that we had also had within our soft, our uh, back office software service Titan. Um, for those of y'all who are using service Titan forms and trying to, uh, have consistent processes for the technician in the field, it's a start and it will get you so far. Um, but when we looked at what XOI really was capable of and all the different aspects of it, we recognized it was a technician's tool not necessarily an order entry tool for a ticket mm -hmm. or for an invoicing ticket system. Um, and so I just got back from service site and Pantheon. So I, I love service site and, but there's a difference here. And so what we decided to do with XOI was embrace it. Um, open up a dialogue with XOI. Um, utilize the templates the best we can that, that came with the initial licensing. 
Um, and the results have been fantastic. Uh, we've been at it almost a year now. Um, it, it, we get so many benefits from it, um, from the standpoint of uh, consistent workflow for the technicians. Um, and the customers love it from the standpoint, the feedback that we get from the customers. Um, and so I would encourage you all to look at XOI if you're not using it today, if you're not aware of the program that Daikin has rolled out. <clears throat> um, these type of solutions will move the needle um, in your organization. Um, today we're doing XOI workflows for <clears throat> uh, installs. So we're doing our quality checks mm -hmm. following a structured workflow. Uh, we're doing it for all of our no cools for on-demand service. Um, <clears throat> we're doing them for maintenances. Um, we just added the capability to do the Daikin equipment registrations based upon the workflow within the uh, quality checks workflow. Um, and we're focusing on trying to generate XOI workflows for uh, scheduled repairs as well. So basically the five different scenarios that you would see technicians in the field, we're going to have a workflow for them to enforce their ability to be thorough and proving to our customers that a part needs to be replaced or we have a suggested recommendation based upon uh, you know, some, some data that we collected within, within XOI. So we look at XOI as the proof of what we did. Mm -hmm. The invoice summary within Service Titan is the charge. So if you want to look at your charges, usually those definitions in Service Titan and the best of our ability as contractors to communicate all that stuff, a lot of times it doesn't make sense until you understand what your diagnosis was. And so we just get, um, from an ownership perspective and from a manage management perspective, when we know that XOI workflow was followed, now we know we're going to have the measurements, mm -hmm. pictures of the measurements, scanning of the faceplate that they, the technician went through, checked the pressures, did all these things. So we know that we collected the technical proof at the job site. And so it's been incredible from that perspective. Um, for the homeowner, for the consumer, what I would say is they have a separate level of comfort with us. They know that we are thorough. We just didn't check some boxes and give you readings. We actually gave you the pictures of the readings from your house um, as part of that. And one of the things that when you talk about technology stack, we're, we're about AI. So we have turned on the AI capability with an XOI to communicate the findings back to the homeowners. We've played around with it. We've dialed it down. We've dialed it up to play with it. Um, it makes our customer communications today so consistent and it bridges the gap of the challenge of a new hire coming into this hmm. industry that doesn't have the vocabulary of 10 years in the field talking to a homeowner about airflow or about uh, capacitors. And so when you let AI tell that story back to the homeowner, you get a very consistent communication uh, going on with all your homeowners. and. Yes, like any new technology, you got to play with it. You just cannot turn this on and, and walk away. You're going to need to turn it on, run your test calls, and see what the outcome is. But that aspect of it, I think, has really helped. Um, and so 
right now, the only AI that we use from a technician standpoint is really associated with the customer communication of the findings they had. And we are using what comes out of XOI, cut and pasting that and putting it into Service Titan on the invoice summary because it's so succinct. And it's, I have to read you this. (laughs) My my ops manager said, hey, if you're going to go do this, you got to talk, you got to, you got to explain this. And so I can't say who this is, but it is another software provider um, in our industry, but they're looking at our service call ticket for this particular situation. So this is an industry veteran Mm -hmm. looking at a service ticket going, oh, MG, how did (laughs) y'all do that? And so here's what they sent back to us after they read it. And, you know, basically it's, uh, you got a management company in here. We're not talking to the consumer. We're talking to the property management company who's looking at it. So lost in translation applies here for sure when you have those property management situations. But technician OV has completed, okay, hold on, let me see. Hello, just reviewed the work summary by Ovi for the consumer, John Smith. And I am bound to say, wow, in all caps with exclamation points. This, wh- the way this guy just summarized his work with every little detail, every check, every possible solution and recommendation, he deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Please give him a thumbs up and appreciation for a wonderful job done. Keep it up. I hate to say it. It wasn't my guy who wrote that. It was a combination of management team putting together the workflow Mm -hmm. to send him out there to do the work, him going through the process, following the process, and the AI regurgitating the outcome to the, to the homeowner or the person that's receiving the ticket. And so it's a game changer. I, as a contractor, will utilize that game-changing technology to differentiate myself from the other Daikin dealers in my market. Yeah, it really ties into your goalpost that you talked about, right? Uh, the customer experience. And, and that's what I hear time and time again when you're utilizing the workflows most technicians did not get into the role of technician because they were great communicators. They're really, really good with their hands. They're really, really good analytically troubleshooting and understanding what's going on with the system. Uh, but the other challenge I think a lot of business owners run into is the other goalpost you talk about, which is that operational efficiency and consistency just from one technician to another. So by you know, utilizing the workflows You make sure you get consistency on every single call. And then by utilizing the AI, you deliver a customer experience like none other. Um, It makes the tech. And what I love is this is where technology is helping technicians be the star that they are. You know, and, and truly, I mean, they are the heroes. They're the ones that are going out and doing this every single day. But this technology just enables them to shine. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I have to back up for a minute with a bigger concept here. As I came in to the world of Daikin, I have to admit, I did not know what Kaizen, Kaizen was. Uh-huh. Had no clue what that concept was. Um, and I'm grateful that I now understand that there's a philosophy and a a lot of documentation around it and you know it's it gives me a word to describe something i think that we would look for in a future hire Hmm. so we talk about techno we talk about the new technician and so the last couple of days i've realized that in my dna 
is Kaizen. It's, you know, that's why I've done so many startups. That's why I've taken a risk because I want to better myself, mm -hmm. learn about new things and challenge myself. And so what I recognize is the hires that I make in my organization share a lot of those qualities. Mm. And I always talk about it from the standpoint of I'm looking for the individual coming in front of me that has a desire to learn that I don't have to spark. Mm -hmm. If I've got to be the one to spark it to learn, he doesn't, they don't have that desire to continually improve. And that's really what it is. It's I'm looking for individuals that have the DNA of Kaizen. Mm -hmm. And so when you find those individuals and you bring them in and they're continuously improving, you better have an environment that's going to support them mm. and match them for what they're interested in. Because if they're a stick in the mud, they don't, they, I want them to go work for the stick in the mud contractor down the road. Right. If they're an innovator, I want them to be part of my team. And so I want to surround them with a process and a procedure that they can fall into and become productive with. And one of the things that I, I've I picked up from um, uh, some speakers who have said it in succinct terms is, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the younger generation's work workforce. Hmm. When they show up coming to work, they might not have the stability of the same home environment that you had. Hmm. Um, a lot of broken homes today, uh, a lot of concerns about what the future may bring. Um, so they're unsure of themselves and they want to fit in. And we live in a very dis human connected environment. We're connected, but not humanly. Hmm. And so at work, when these people come in and we're trying to recruit these people, one of the important qualities we can offer them is a well thought out, uh, training approach, well thought out, uh, uh first, uh, couple of months where we're not going to be putting them in a position where they might feel like they're letting us down or there's going to be unknown when they show up. And so I started to understand and realize that what, the new worker challenge that was just described for that workforce, what they really want for want is to come to a place to work, to appeal to their desire to fit in, to be successful. Hmm. And if there's not the elements of processes and procedures and tools they can use and a, a culture that's invested in them being successful, and taking them from where they are today to making them uh, the professional HVAC technician that we were, we were just kind of, you know, uh, talking around. That's what they're looking for. And so all of the processes, the tools, they're going to see that they're going to be more successful. They don't have a preconceived notion of the way it used to be. And if I can take a technician off, you know, waiting tables, you know, uh, the year before to now sitting in front of a customer using AI, communicating to the customer why their system needs to be replaced or why their contactor needs to be replaced, why we need to do a pull and clean. And I used AI to get that person there. I think I'm going to have an employee for life. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you talk about Kaizen and, and that Daikin philosophy, but I think that leads to the greater philosophy that Daikin has of unlocking the infinite potential of everyone on your team. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love how you say that is people are looking for something bigger to be a part of. It's not just that I'm going to go punch the clock and do my nine to five. It's I want to be part of this this bigger thing. And I think when you start talking in terms of unlocking that infinite human potential, and to your point, that's what technology helps us do is unlock that and, and really allow people to be uh, everything that they were meant to be. Uh, so talking about your 
your tech stack. We've mm-hmm. talked about Service Titan a little bit, and uh, which is you know a wonderful platform. And then we've talked about XOI and integrating that. What other things make up your whole tech stack? If you were to to look at you know Temperature Pro of San Antonio's uh, you know recipe for success that you've put together. So one of those I got to look back because they're new. Sure, and um, they're technology name has uh now settled on link up okay um link up is a early uh, stage company um and they are a workforce visualization tool hmm. um and so we are using that today um we were they've come a long way in the last uh uh 12 to uh, 18 months you're going to hear more of them. Um, it is the ability to see at the office on the computer what your technicians are seeing in the field. Hmm. So we talk about workplace visualization, virtual reality, all kinds of things. Um, link, uh, linked up has figured it up, figured it out. And um, so our technicians roll with the sets so they we see what they see um link up has also just integrated with field piece so we can now read the field piece settings that the technician is getting off their probes in real time at the house um game changer yeah game changer um it's We've all in in the telecommunications industry, the oil and gas industry, the medical business, any of your skilled trades where you've got skilled hands out there, we've all worked hard to try to find this solution mm-hmm. um, that is accessible, cost efficient, and uh, can actually be done. And man, I shout out to mm-hmm. those folks. Um, and uh and what they're doing but uh we're a firm believer in what they're doing and all of my guys are rolling with that it makes a big difference so that's an integral part of the future for my technicians and their stack of of technology out there um so we got xoi we got link up um the other technology that we're using on the sales side or comfort advisor, product specialist, uh, you're selling techs, uh, we're using Conduit. So um, that was an interesting story. You told me uh, how you found them. And I think that's interesting <laughs> because I think that's another point for entrepreneurs to, to make sure they keep in mind. So, so how did you find Conduit technology? So I'm, I'm going to... I don't know her name, <laughs> but um, it was the EGIA event in Las Vegas last two years ago. Okay. I guess it was two years ago. Um, and she was doing her thing, networking as an entrepreneur, trying to figure out if her idea that the solution they built would work in the HVAC space. And uh, over cocktail, um, with my wife and I, we real quickly figured out that absolutely we were interested in what they were mm-hmm. doing. Please call us and we want to talk more and learn more. So fast forward today, um, we are using Conduit, um, actively giving them feedback on their technology. Uh, for those of y'all who don't know what this, that is, um, it's LiDAR, mm-hmm. uh, technology that is only found on an iPad Pro, uh, so beware. Um, but it allows an HVAC person to walk through the house and generate an accurate heat load just by sh- shining the camera around the house, around the room. And so um, it's a game changer. Um, so many of our houses, uh, you know, especially in this part of the world in, in Texas are, you know, there's multiple systems in the house. And so doing a heat load calculation can be a challenge. Um, you got open floor plans and so forth. 
Um, and doing a heat load calculation quickly, doing a heat load calculation with a technology tool in front of the customer that yields a superior outcome um, is a game changer. And again, it's a differentiator. So if you're, if my product specialist is competing with your product specialist, your homeowner, if I've been there first, is probably going to ask you, how come you're not doing what the other guy did? Um, how come you're not using technology to ver validate the solution that your recommendation? And so conduit technology is uh, another one. Um, I think it's conduit HVAC is what they are, their name mm -hmm. is. Um, and so that's an early stage technology we adopted and, and just like link up. Um, and we've been really happy with, um, so the fourth one that we've just added is a AI, uh, answering assistant. Hmm. Um, and that's really regarding overflow. Uh, I mean, we're in the human touch business. I want to talk to my clients if I can, but I can't get to every phone call. Um, there's just no way to do it. Um, and then after hours what do you do? Right. And so, you know, uh, having a call center answer and take notes is they all customers know what's going on. Um, so what we decided to do was, uh, investigate all the iterations of AI out there. And we found one called zero talk. Um, and there's several of them out there. Um, but zero talk for us today is our overflow, uh, inbound, um, uh, call taker, uh, when we just can't get to it. Um, they also, the AI ox takes calls after hours for us as well. Um, and if you aren't comfortable investigating the technology, I would tell you dearm yourself become comfortable um this technology has evolved a long way um with the human interaction and the dialogue side of it um ai was not born yesterday in the call centers it's been going around for a long time we just called it machine learning mm -hmm. um and so I, I can tell you that i've had we know for sure we've had customers hang up the phone never know that they just spoke with an AI, <laughs> never having any idea that they just spoke with a non-human. Um, but it's worthy technology because what I like about that is after hours, we get an email. Everybody on the team gets an email. We get a choice of whether we're going to deploy an after hours service call for this, for this particular situation or we're going to delay it and call back on Monday. Um, and so, you know, there's pluses and minuses. I, I think I started by saying that we're in the human contact business and we much rather have a human voice. Right. But we're also small enough shop to know that I can't afford to have people on standby just for that overflow call. And so, using technology to appear that we're answering the phones all the time uh, makes a big difference. And again, I'm gonna use it to differentiate myself in the marketplace. And so that's one we're committed to. And I think, you know, this time next year, you'll probably have a lot of other contractors saying the same thing with AI doing inbound mm -hmm. and overflow. Absolutely. It is so fascinating to watch how technology is just continues to evolve. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate the fact that you are leading the charge and being an early adopter in a lot of these technologies. But uh, as you've said, uh, that definitely helps you stay ahead of all of your competitors in your marketplace and, and helps you stand out and, and serve your customers better, serve your employees better. Uh, I've really appreciated this talk. This has been great. Do you have any final words of wisdom that you want to share with fellow contractors out there? Um, yes, I do. Okay. A and 
I can tell you that this comes from being on the other side of the table in the vendor community, working in an industry um, where the service providers, contractors, uh, uh, electric companies, um, when you're in an environment like that, your, your first instinct is first don't go cause you don't have time. Mm. Your second instinct is I'm not going to go cause I don't have the time. If I learn anything good, I'm not going to have the ability to, to implement it in my shop. Mm. I can tell you, put yourself out there, leave your preconceived notions that, that you're the smartest person in the room at home. Uh, go to the events, ask the questions, talk to the bigger contractors, hmm. um, ask why, learn, and don't just go home back to your shop and put all those notes on a shelf. Go back and look at them. Go back. You wrote down something. You, you, you did that for a reason. It, some of those little nuggets that you might take back from an, an industry event or a learning environment can be worth all the expense that you personally funded to get there or the business funded to get there all the time away from your wife and kids. And it can sh make a difference in your customers and your employees. Um, and so what I would say my best advice is sometimes you're your own worst enemy because you think you know everything and you think that this industry is not going to change and that what you did five years ago, six years ago is still going to work. This industry is evolving. Your customers' expectations are evolving. The technology is evolving. Um, so if you're not evolving and learning and putting yourself out there in that principle of Kaizen, then I would say I will have your customer base soon. Tim, thank you so much. For all of you that are out there, if you liked this episode, please hit that like button. Also, make sure that you're following us just so you can be informed of all of the upcoming episodes that we have. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, Ben. And I just want to say thanks and a big shout out to Ben. I've got an opportunity to meet Ben in a lot of different uh, places um, associated with the HVAC uh, University and the Daikin Learning Opportunities. And I can tell you that if you get the opportunity um, to interface with uh, Ben and, and, and the team, um, you're going to benefit from it. Uh, their goal is to help you. Um, and so if you don't think you need the help, why are you listening? <laughs> Thank you so much, Tim. We really appreciate it.